It's a rainy morning here in Bangalore, but we are back again with yet another episode of Marketing for Founders. I am Suraj Kumarkaran, the founder of Digital Uncovered. Like Suraj said, it is indeed great to see mango showers towards the end of April in Bangalore. Today we bring to you yet another episode of Marketing for Founders, and my name is Ajish Venugopalan. I'm the founder and CEO for AJ and DJ Media. What are we going to talk today? The importance of learning culture. for founders and marketers understanding popular culture is key let's try and figure out why one of the aspects of marketing that keeps marketers really awake at night is do we really understand the popular culture how has the popular culture in india evolved over the years When I started my career a decade ago, this is one of those questions that really, really bothered me. It even even does now, right? So, how is India different from any other market in the world, as far as marketing is concerned, and as far as understanding of popular culture goes? So, the, one of the aspects that you have to understand about India is that India is fundamentally a trust deficit market, right? If you are a startup, if you are a company which is just starting off, right, it takes time to build trust and credibility. and once you build trust and credibility you can sell any anything from salt to semiconductors to people right which is what companies like tata group and birlas and reliance and adanis and other companies have managed to do in india let's try and understand why india primarily is a trust deficit market not just india in in context to the global scenario the entire seven 0.2 billion people are divided and they are divided by contributing factors like religion language color customs and ta- taboos values the sto- social structure and so on but why is it important for a founder or a marketer to learn culture because culture primarily determines the buying habits of the end consumers so if there are companies from abroad who is looking at india as a potential market it's very very important for them both the founders as well as the marketers to understand indian culture and likewise for indian companies who are trying to expand to foreign countries it's very very important for them to understand their culture as well growing up back in 90s and early 2000s uh, i remember my mom used to go to uh, the vegetable uh, store and she would always look for a, a good bargain in the vegetable market right sometimes you would get a discount on the pricing but when you wouldn't get a discount on the pricing what you would do is you will negotiate for some freebie which is usually the masala thrown in thrown in for free which is still is coriander uh, lemon and all of that right uh, so as a market we've always been value conscious right if you look at the last two two or three decades we've always been value conscious the slowly moving from being value conscious to brand conscious now right you are if if you are buying something that is a necessity and that is something that is important right like healthcare for instance you wouldn't want to compromise on the hospital that you go to right but as far as discretionary spending is concerned you are always value conscious even look at the 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 budget smartphone that is sold in india you don't you don't think about the brand right in india you are looking for the best deal or the best bargain that you can get right so we are slowly moving from being value conscious to brand conscious but also differentiates indian consumer is that while we are value conscious and we are brand conscious we are also very pampered right so if if you if you are a consumer in us you what you do is you want to buy your groceries you go to walmart and uh, you buy the grocery for the entire month load it in your trunk and go and put in, put that into your garage what happens in india is that you are buying in small quantities and why is that so when you go to the supermarket it's it's not just that you're buying groceries it's sort of a recreational activity for you you will usually have a pani puri wala who is outside the supermarket so it's a recreational activity for you you buy a limited number of groceries you have a gala time outside the supermarket where you have a pani puri wala or a chai wala from where you buy the chai and you head back home now these are patterns which are very very uh, uh, unique for india and these patterns don't exist anywhere else india's growth story begins in the early 90s with the liberalization policy brought in by the then government in the year 
from what surit said india has been a value conscious market for a long time but it has been slowly changing and evolving and what are the key factors that one should look at as a marketer as a or as a founder that you should look at is the gdp per state in each state in this country or what is the per capita gdp in this country what are the literacy rates in each state in this particular country these are factors which will help you understand each of these markets individually let me give you a quick example in the 90s uh, the first car uh, preferred by the indians were maruti suzuki which is value for money so we were very very value conscious then but today with the growth that we have projected over the last 3 decades you will see that people have been shifting to a hyundai and from probably a hyundai we've been sh shifting to an mg hector a mercedes an audi or a bmw a sort of cars as well uh, in the automotive sector but let's let's give let me give you a, another example wherein uh, earlier when we used to buy a, a bottle of shampoo in a city uh, for the villagers we introduced a 1 rupee shampoo sachet or a 2 rupee sa sachet which probably supported the economic conditions of the rural india i remember attending a, a class uh, by dr ck prahlad wherein he introduced us to a case study where they sold ice creams for 1 rupee in the rural market the rural and the urban markets in india are way too different and for me to conclude uh, india has got the most beautiful socio economic classification and probably we will do another episode on socio economic classification of india as well but this is not very different for other countries across the globe which we will come back to it so as a founder or as an entrepreneur Uh, how do you understand popular culture or how do you decipher popular culture there are two aspects that you should really focus on as an entrepreneur or as a founder the first is to understand all the micro and macro trends what is currently happening in the market uh, there are the talks of cancel culture there are there are talks of wokeness or woke culture right there are so many micro and macro trends that are happening all around why do you need to understand this because as entrepreneurs or as founders uh, your brand is going to create a lot of content uh, by understanding uh, these micro or macro trends you will be able to leverage uh, some of these micro and macro trends to build content around it or uh, rather you would choose to avoid being part of some of these micro and macro trends right unless and until you are a brand which takes a stand on issues and the content that you are going to create then which sort of align with the world view that your consumer has right if you're going to say something contrarian to what your consumers are uh, thinking in their mind they might not agree with what you're saying so therefore it is very very understand important to understand uh, micro and macro trends the second aspect that you have to really focus on is to talk to your consumers and when i'm i'm referring to talk to your consumers i'm not talking of focus group discussions and the other research methods that are available out there what really makes a difference is when you eavesdrop into a discussion so one of the stories that i've heard of uh, is of suman manglikar uh, who was a very senior executive at uh, tata motors and how he used to sit at dhabas so that he could have a conversation with truck drivers who were who using tata trucks right and that gave him insights on how they can build better products because the consumer might not be telling a lot of things uh there there might be a lot of experiences that they might have with the product that they might not be sharing with you uh so it is very very important to talk to consumers and incorporate some of those insights into the products and services that you want to build adding to what surit said on founders having a global view let me further add a, a bit of insights into it geopolitical scenarios are very very important for founders and marketers equally Just to quote a few examples, there was a, an advertisement by Tanishq, which recently got banned, or they were forced to rather withdraw it. The ad projected a Hindu woman marrying a Muslim man, and they were trying to gift uh, the gold. Uh, the ad was withdrawn because of the current geopolitical scenario in this country. Similarly, if you look at uh, an ad by AU Small Finance Bank. where we talk about a ghar jamai concept that that ad was as well forced to be withdrawn from the market giving you a global example 
India recently banned a lot of Chinese apps. So it's very, very important for all the founders out there and all the marketeers out there to have a global view on culture and the geopolitical scenario. And this helps in creating or crafting your content in the right way. Remember, content is the king. With this, we come to a conclusion of this episode of Marketing for Founders. We will be back again with exciting topics to discuss on marketing for founders. This is Ajish Venugopalan, the founder of AJ and VG Media, signing off. This is Suresh Divakaran, founder of Digital Uncovered, signing off.